And then we would need a way to turn this back into an amine. And I think we've already, we've already really learned how to do that as well, using our previous reactions for carboxylic acids and acid derivatives. What could we treat this with to turn it back into the amine? Mm -hmm. What would be the name of that reaction? Hydrolysis. We could just do a hydrolysis, which would break off this L group over here. Uh, let's see. The book says that they generally use a... Basic hydrolysis? I don't know why you couldn't use an acidic hydrolysis here. In fact, it seems like acidic hydrolysis would work better if you really want the protonated form. No. Oh, I see. Yeah, you wouldn't want the basic. So this is the hydrolysis reaction that we've learned about. We've seen how we can hydrolyze carboxylic acid derivatives. Again, this would be our normal uh, addition elimination reaction. Now, if we had done this under acidic conditions, we would get an ammonium instead of ammonia. So this is a case where the basic hydrolysis is more convenient. We saw that amines have two different forms, protonated and not protonated. Well, if we want the non-protonated form, we'd want to do this under basic conditions. So the acid-catalyzed hydrolysis would give us the, uh, the ammonium. So it's better to use the base-catalyzed hydrolysis. All right, so this is how we can go back and forth then between these two. Come up with a way to do this sentences. Don't you first add? Like first add one NO2 and then turn it into an NH2 and then add another NO2. Sounds good. So you can do this. Uh, then what? Then you reduce it to NH2. Groups. Oh no, you need to block the para. So first you add an SO3H to it with fuming sulfuric acid. Right. And then after you do that, then you add the H2, HNO3H2SO4, and then you remove the right. SO3H. Okay, that all sounds good. Now in the book they did this uh, slightly differently. In the book they decided that they needed to moderate the activating power here. After all, we want to add one more nitrogen group not two nitrogen groups. So you might be worried with a very strong activator like this that we'd end up with groups at both the ortho positions eventually. Okay. okay. Also, in addition to that, um, they, they mentioned also that this is so reactive that it might also have uh, competing reactions. Because this is somewhat basic, this could attack the reagents that we're trying to use in some ways. For example, if we try to put on a NO2 group, 
maybe instead of the NO2 group attacking the benzene, it could just get attacked by this nitrogen over here because it has a somewhat nucleophilic lone pair. So to be on the safe side, that's right, we can use our moderating effect. All right, and then I think you figured out what to do. Our next step would be That's right. Now, is this still an ortho para director? Yes. It's just not as much. It's, not, it's still an activator. It's just a more moderate. If we added the NO2 groups now, we would get a mix of ortho and para. So we want to block the para position. Now we can add a nitro group. Now, what are the advantages of moderating the nitrogen here? First of all, we don't need to worry about having two nitro groups add, because this is only a moderate activator. And also, remember that what we're really doing here is creating an NO2 cation. Well, like I was just saying, the NO2 cation, instead of attacking the benzene, it might have just been attacked directly by this nitrogen. This nitrogen is so reactive. But we don't need to worry about this nitrogen attacking the NO2, because we know that amide nitrogens are not as reactive. So for both of these reasons, maybe this is a safer approach. Uh, and then from this point, we need to we still have to get rid of the SO3H, and we also have to get rid of the right. acid. So just do it in two steps. Step one, the OH minus H2O. Step two, can we do that? So what would we add first? Either one, it doesn't matter. Now, I think it is going to matter because Oh, because one, if you just add the H plus, it's going to have an H. Okay. If we add H3O plus second, we're going to end up with a protonated nitrogen over here. Yeah. So it's better to do... To get rid of SO3 first. First we can do the acidic hydrolysis. And isn't the second step just stealing an H now? Yeah. The acidic hydrolysis would not only kick off the sulfon group, it would also kick off, uh, turn the amide into an ammonium. Uh, but in order to turn it back into an NH2, we have to put this under basic conditions, because we don't want to end up with NH3+. Plus. So the H3O plus, we know that's going to kick off the sulfon group. Um, it's also going to hydrolyze this amide back into an amine, but it's going to leave it protonated. So in our last step, we can go back to basic conditions. So that we have the unprotonated form of the amine. Have to add the acyl group. Uh, I think you would get a lot of credit if you didn't add the acyl group, but you might get more credit if you did put the acyl group here. Okay. The most important thing we went through there is just remember that an amine on a nitrogen is a strong activator and an amide is a moderate activator and to understand why that is.